Hello and welcome to our NJ Decides 2022 Election Exchange Podcast. I'm Brianna Venozzi. We are weeks away now from the midterm elections where your vote is critical and could decide the balance of power in Congress. All 12 seats are up for grabs here in New Jersey. So we are talking to the candidates and drilling down on the issues to help you decide where to cast your vote in November. Today, I'm here with two-term incumbent Democratic Representative Tom Malinowski from the 7th Congressional District, which spans the state, by the way, covering all of Hunterdon and Warren counties and parts of Morris, Somerset, Sussex, Union, uh, all of those counties. He's facing off with former State Senator Tom Kane Jr. Representative Malinowski, thanks for joining me. Great to be here. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, So let me ask you first, you're no stranger to a challenge. Uh, You were part of the blue wave in 2016. Last year, razor thin margins in your race. Why should voters elect to give you a third term? I go back to what um, I promised to do when I first ran in 2018, or more accurately, what voters asked me to do when when I first ran. We, We talked about issues like the cost of health care. in in America uh, at a moment when the Affordable Care Act was on the chopping block. Well, I I promised to save the ACA, make it more affordable. We passed legislation that did exactly that. Uh, I heard from seniors who uh, were uh, up in arms that uh, Americans, particularly our our senior population, pays five, six, ten times as much for prescription drugs as people in any other wealthy country in the world. They asked me to go to Washington and try to let Medicare negotiate with the drug companies to get the cost of those drugs down. We did that. Uh, I heard from commuters and, well, New Jerseyans of, of all stripes who were, were angry that for decades the federal government has done almost nothing to help us fix and repair our infrastructure, particularly big projects like the Gateway Tunnel. And I went to Washington, helped pass the biggest investment in American infrastructure in this country's history. I heard from parents of young kids who were upset that we're the only country in the world where parents drop their kids off at school and have to worry about school shootings. Do something, finally, about that problem. Well, we did. We beat the NRA, passed the first gun violence prevention bill in three decades, helped bring the economy back from COVID, saved millions and millions of jobs that would have been lost had we not acted. Now, I know there's a lot more that needs to be done. All those jobs we saved, we have to save the paychecks that go with those jobs. We've got to tackle inflation. We've done a lot to get gas prices down in the last couple of months. There's a lot more we need to do to fix our supply chains, to make our economy more resilient against all these global shocks that we are facing. But my hope is that voters, when they uh, decide who to choose, who who's best to tackle those problems, that they... They choose somebody who has kept their promises over the last four years, not somebody like my opponent who's complained about those problems but presented absolutely no solutions, no alternatives. In fact, he refuses to speak to voters or the press about what he would do if he were elected. Well, I'm I'm curious what you see as the biggest issue facing uh, both New Jersey and our nation if you are elected. Uh, There was a Monmouth University national poll out today And it showed Democrats in particular are all over the place when it comes to issues, Um, prices, inflation, the economy, really just wreaking havoc on on folks' lives. And and they are concerned about just, you know, buying those groceries, getting those meals on the table. Uh, You mentioned a number of items which were in the Inflation Reduction Act. You backed that. I want to ask you, A, what do you see as the biggest uh, issue facing us uh, as we head into this midterm election, but also whether or not the spending in that Inflation Act is sustainable to achieve what folks, at least in this Monmouth University poll, say they need, which is just basic affordability? Uh, Absolutely. Well, the economy is the number one issue. It's not the only issue, but let's let's stick to the economy for a moment. The Inflation Reduction Act uh, is a bill that raises revenue rather than uh, simply spending money. Uh, in, during the pandemic, admittedly, we spent a lot of money because every economist in the country 
came to us and, and said, if we don't do something big, if you don't do something fast, those tens of millions of jobs that we lost in 2020, the millions of small businesses that had to shut down in 2020 would not come back. We were successful in bringing them back. Congress was also criticized for for heavily inflating the economy, for for heavily stimulating the economy. Ev- was, the, that a, was that was that the right move? There was a bipartisan consensus that we had to stimulate the economy in order to save it. Remember, tens of millions of us were out of work two years ago. We were on the verge of a great depression. Today, we have the lowest unemployment in America in over sixty years. People have money to spend. The problem is that. We brought back consumer spending. We brought back jobs before we could bring back the supply chains that provide us the goods that we want to buy. And so one of the most important things we did this summer in Congress was pass a bill called the Chips and Science Act, which is designed to bring back manufacturing of these critical technologies, critical industries to the United States because we learned that it's just impossible for us to go on being this dependent on countries like China for the supply chains, the power our economy. So that's a problem that we've started to fix. Again, we acted. We did something. Um, In terms of the Inflation Reduction Act, it is the opposite of what we did in the pandemic. Rather than pumping money into the economy, it actually takes money out of the economy. It raises more money than it spends. And it also lowers costs for things like prescription drugs, for healthcare, for energy, for any American who wants to change the way they consume energy, buy an electric car, change the way we heat our homes, all those things are going to be dramatically less expensive than they would have been had we not passed that that bill. Um, it's a bill that reduces the deficit by $300 billion. But does it address, and, and you know this as well as I do, we talk to economists uh, regularly here, does it indre- address the immediate uh, needs of folks who are dealing with inflation? Does it both bring that down and address it in the long term or in the short term? In the short term, it makes a lot of things more affordable, including health care and prescription drugs. In the long term, it reduces inflationary pressures in the economy by, again, taking more money out of the economy than it puts back in by lowering the deficit. You can't accuse Congress of increasing inflation when we increase the deficit and not give us credit when we then lower the deficit as we did right now. Um, And again, the other side's got to put forward an alternative. When Republicans controlled Congress between 2017 and 2019, they had two years with with the president of their own party to do something about spending and the deficit. They did absolutely nothing. In fact, their signature piece of legislation, a massive tax cut for American corporations and the wealthy, added $2 trillion, $2 trillion to the national debt. What we just did is the first major piece of legislation Congress has passed in years that actually reduces debt and deficits. I wonder if anyone even keeps track of the national debt these days, I how do. high it is. I do. Uh, that's good, uh, given given your office. Let's switch gears to something less complicated. Uh, let's talk about abortion, <laughs> uh, being ironic there. First of all, um, you've backed a number of recent bills that passed in the House to give more protective rights both to uh, abortion and to contraception. Uh, what more would you you want to see done in Congress, uh, we know where you stand now on the issue. Um, the, the issue of abortion is complicated for, for, for individuals, for, for families. Everything about pregnancy and childbirth is complicated. But what's not complicated for me is who should make the decision. The government should not make the decision. Women and their families and their doctors should make these complicated decisions. Roe versus Wade protected that principle. It's now gone because the Supreme Court has shredded it and states across this country are now banning abortion even from the point of conception. There are women's lives that are at risk across this country as a result, and Republicans have promised explicitly if they take control of the House and Senate, they will pass a national ban on abortion that will override our laws in New Jersey. What I am for is the opposite of that. Congress needs to convene next year and codify once and for all the rights that were guaranteed by Roe versus Wade. And that goes for, yes, the right to choose to have an abortion, but also 
the right to use contraceptives, birth control, the freedom to marry who we want. All of these rights and freedoms were put at risk by the Roe versus Wade decision. And as you know, big difference here between me and my opponent. Does that change how you view or or what your view is of having the Democrats control the House? Um, do you see that as top priority? It, it, it's a Look, I wish we didn't have to be talking about this because these are rights that we took for granted for 50 years, but they were taken away. And, you know, Senator Lindsey Graham, who I work with on a lot of issues, I consider him uh, a friend who I disagree with uh, a lot, uh, made it very clear. He said if Republicans take control of the House and Senate, they will pass a national abortion ban. And if Democrats, he helpfully reminded us, keep control of the House and Senate, we will do the opposite. We will enshrine these rights that we have enjoyed, that women have enjoyed for the last 50 years into the law of the land once and for all. So this is a very clear, simple choice that the American people have to make this November. Do you support term limits for Supreme Court justices? Would you support term limits? Um, I, I'm not trying to blow up the Supreme Court. I, I disagree with the decision that they made. I, I revere the constitutional structure that we have. I'm, I tend to be quite conservative when it comes to making radical changes to that structure. The solution when the Supreme Court makes a decision, interprets a law in a way that I disagree with, is to clarify or to change that law. And in this case, we've never had a national law that addressed these issues. We've just relied on the courts. So the charge to us as lawmakers is to pass the Dorn Law, codify these rights as the overwhelming majority of the American people want us to do. And the difference here is I've already voted to do so. I will continue to vote to do so. My opponent, Tom Kane Jr., this January, voted against codifying Roe v. Wade for the state of New Jersey. Uh, I have two two other topics I want to get to, Congressman, in the short time that we have. Let's talk about um, the issue of guns. There are a lot of parents, we hear it regularly, who are highly concerned about what we have been seeing over really the last decade plus um, in terms of mass shootings, both in our schools, outside of schools. Do you see the argument uh, about addressing mental health issues first? Um, and that more gun restrictions limit uh, lawfully law-abiding owners of guns. Uh, I am a huge proponent of investing more in mental health. And the bill that we just passed in the Congress this year dealing with gun violence invests billions of dollars in, in addition to what we're spending today to shore up our system for protecting mental health and treating people with mental health problems in, in our country. Um, but at the same time, look, we have, we have shown in New Jersey what works. We have some of the toughest gun violence prevention laws in America right here in New Jersey. You can own a gun, but assault rifles are banned. We have background checks. We have bans on um, ammunition magazines. Uh, police in New Jersey can take away somebody's guns temporarily with a court order if that person can pose a risk to themselves or, or to others. And you know what? We've got one of the lowest rates of gun violence deaths in America, homicide and suicide. Do we have less mental health problems in New Jersey than other states? No. Do we have less crime? Do we have less poverty? No. We have all the other problems, but fewer New Jerseyans die from gun violence than almost any Americans because we have strong gun laws. We need to pass those laws for the country as a whole. Um, let me wrap this up by asking about a case that you have that was referred to the uh, House Ethics Committee. This was about uh, a number of stocks that were traded and not disclosed uh, in 2020. Uh, the committee did say that you were not accused of wrongdoing, but also didn't dismiss your case as they did with some of the other members of Congress who had cases before them. Where does that stand and what can you tell voters who may be questioning that? Yeah, The, the, the Ethics Committee was looking into um, dozens of members of Congress, unfortunately, Republicans and Democrats, uh, who, like me, uh, screwed up the, the monthly transaction reports, were late in filing some of those reports, took responsibility for that uh, a, a long time ago, corrected the problem with the help of the Ethics Committee. I'm now one of only about 10 members of Congress, the House and Senate, that has put my entire retirement savings into a fully blind trust. So I have no idea what 
my investments are, and I've co-sponsored legislation that I've pushed hard for to ensure to require every single member of Congress to have a blind trust if we have any investments in the market whatsoever. Um, the the sure. case, where does it stand? Uh, it's resolved in terms of everything has been reported. Right now, the Ethics Committee is um, unable to function for a couple of reasons because the tragic death of of the Republican ranking member, uh, Jackie Walorski, Wilor- um, and also because there are rules that prohibit it from issuing decisions in the months or the weeks before yeah. an election. But um, there's no ethics committee investigation into my case. It was just a process to ensure that everything was accurately reported. In 30 seconds, then, what else do you want voters to know? Uh, Some are already voting right now with mail-in ballots. Uh, In the last four years, I've delivered on the issues that that voters have asked me to to fight for. Infrastructure, cost of living, the cost of drugs and health care, gun violence prevention. Um, I'm a moderate Democrat. I've built an alliance in my district of Republicans and Democrats who support me. I've stood up to extremism on both sides of the of the aisle. My opponent, unfortunately, is running uh, to the hard MAGA right, promised to stand by Donald Trump no matter what Donald Trump does. He's proposed absolutely no solutions to the problems of inflation, supply chains, all the problems that we're facing in our economy. I think it's a clear choice between people who are trying to deliver for their constituents and somebody who is simply trying to divide us. All right. Uh, Representative Tom Malinowski, thank you for coming in. That wraps up our conversation uh, with Congressman Malinowski. Uh, Please do know that we reached out to Tom Kane Jr. several times to participate in this podcast. Uh, His team uh, never, in fact, responded to our requests. NJ Decides 2022 Election Exchange is an NJ Spotlight News production. Jamie Kraft is the executive producer. Our executive in charge of production is Joe Lee. Rob Rowan is the producer. Alvin Badger is the director. Frank Brown is our audio recording engineer. Chloe Matisse is our production manager. And David Krieger is our audio editor. Thanks for being here. <laughs>